Today I'm going to talk about an important skill when it comes to painting landscapes, street scenes, any scene that has trees in it. Now I'm going to talk about how we group these trees and see them as one large connected shape and the power that this approach has when it comes to creating a sense of depth in your work and having a strong focused painting. Now I want you to look at this reference photo. Here is one of the tricky things about this painting. I had this line of trees in the background and then I have these trees closer up in the scene. And the temptation is when we look at the trees and we focus on what's going on in the background, we want to paint every little value change, every bit of texture. We're looking at these trees and if we really focus, we can see individual branches. We take in way too much detail. The first thing we want to think about when painting trees is how can we simplify the distance and make our painting more focused. So you'll see in the painting here, I chose to really minimize those background trees to keep the main focus of the painting right here. And here's how I did this. Mute the green that is further away. Cool it down just a little bit. I don't want the green of these trees to be as vibrant as trees that are closer up. So as we get further away in the background, we want to mute the color of green that we use. The second thing I'm thinking about is edge. When we see all that detail in the background of the painting, the temptation is to paint it exactly like we are able to see it and use a lot of texture and a lot of contrast, but we want to minimize both of those things when we are painting the background. So what I did was I painted this mass of trees and then while it was still damp, I put a few darks in to give the shape a little bit of definition, but not to make it too overwhelming. If we have vibrant green, a lot of contrast, a lot of hard edges in the background, we lose the depth in our scene and that area of the painting will start to compete with all of the rest of the painting. So let's take a look at one more example and then I'm gonna actually mix some of these colors and show you how to do that as well. Okay, here's another painting, just a different view and the same location. If you look in the reference photo, again, you can see so much texture on these background trees, but I really tried to downplay that and reserve more of my texture, more of my saturation for the trees that are closer up into the scene. So if I had that same hard edge, that same bit of darkness, and crisp edges all the way in the background of the scene, I'm automatically competing between that area and that area of the painting. So I'm gonna do a quick little demonstration on how I mix some of these colors and a little bit of the timing of the process as well. So for the background greens, I'm using some cobalt turquoise, some lavender with some raw sienna, and I'm creating more of a dull green for the background. So I wanna keep that shape more simple. Okay, and let's pretend that the trees move through here across the scene. See how on the tree line in the reference photo, it's just jagged trees all over the place. You can suggest some of that texture without having it all over the place. So maybe there are a couple taller trees that kind of stick up over the horizon. You can throw in a few, put maybe one tree here that's a little closer, maybe has a little more texture on it. And when I say texture, I'm talking about the edge, the edge of your shape. It's a little more jagged, I guess you could say. Okay. And while this is wet, you can take some darker paint. I'm going to use a little bit of neutral tint, raw umber. And I'm thinking more about value than color. I'm not too worried about color, just something a little thicker. And you can drop in a few darker areas to imply some of the shadows and give the trees a little bit more form. You see how that's making a little bit of a difference there? Just that little suggestion of change in value. Just throw in a little bit of information when this wash is still damp and it makes a big difference. One of the keys to good painting is figuring out what you can suggest and what you actually need to paint clearly and defined. That's an example of some trees in a distance. Now I'm going to move into this weeping willow tree here. It's more of the focus. So I'm taking more raw sienna. Thicker paint, I'm adding a little more yellow. There's a little bit of cadmium yellow medium. There's a little bit more color in this mixture here. And so this tree is closer to us, right? This tree is closer and it's more of the focus. Okay, while it's still damp, mix up some darker green. You can do some neutral tint, some more cobalt turquoise. And we're gonna drop in the shadow side of this tree while it's still wet.
So now we've created kind of a light side and shadow side. You can have the bottom of the tree, you know, gonna paint some shadows. You could connect that to the ground. Let's review that principle. Trees in the background should be minimized in texture, minimized in saturation. And really, if you squint, try to see them as one big shape. That brings this forward automatically in the minimal way that I've painted this pushes it more in the background. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.